Um, in this video, I'm going to be answering question, evaluation question number one, which is, in what ways does your media product use, develop, or challenge forms and conventions of real media products? Um, so I'm going to start with the real media products that are um, that we've taken inspiration from or look very similar to ours. So the first real media text that um, is similar to ours is Mirrors, uh, which is a film by Alex Ajar. Um, I think that this is very similar to ours because ours is really based on mirrors for a start. We, we are, um, we've definitely got a running theme of mirrors and reflections in our um, in the element of our film. Um, the fact that on the poster there is an R backwards which matches um, on our poster. We've got an R in the tagline. It says it's her reflection and the R is backwards as well. So I feel like this kind of matches it kind of, we've taken that little bit there and it's kind of plain on the word reflection obviously because the R's reflected and in mirrors it is too. So the second real media text that I think um, we took inspiration from slash um, is kind of similar to ours is Split, the movie that came out in 2017 this year. Uh, it stars James McAvoy as the lead character and uh, like ours it's a psychological horror thriller type thing. Um, Ours is obviously psychological horror, and I think this is a psychological horror thriller. Um, and again, it links to our magazine this time because um, of the it's got cracks and like like on Sydney's face in um, on our magazine. And also the writing, the film title is um, distorted, like ours is. Ours is kind of blurred, um, and theirs is um, split into different into three different sections. Another one is actually um, Mirrors 2, um, because on the poster it's got um, a face and then some lots of shattered glass, and on our poster it has that as well. Um, we've really played um, on the theme of reflection, shattering, cracking, fractured as it were, because um, I think it really fits with our theme and the um, kind of storyline of our trailer and movie. The last real media text that I'm going to talk about is Final Destination. Um, it really links to ours because it's got shattered glass and um, the face in the shattered glass, like our one does, with Sydney. Um, although on their poster it looks like they kind of have included the villain a bit, and on ours we haven't. Um, we have a little bit, but we didn't want to give away who the villain was because it's meant to be twisting the minds of the audience. Um, so, yeah, we, we put that kind of very fade in the, faded into the background, whereas they've kind of included the skull and bones. Um, but we have also, we've put the um, main character into the glass and then shattered it and then put the rest of the characters in there as well. So now I'm going to talk about the conventions of um, that we've included into our poster, our trailer and our magazine. So first off, we're going to start with Maison Sen. We have filmed our um, trailer in a house, in a domestic setting, which is a very common convention of horror because at home you're meant to feel safe and if someone intrudes your safe space, then, you know, it's very dangerous and kind of gives, it gives a scare element and a, it relates to the audience. Um, so we also filmed scenes at night because the dark kind of plays on the, the theory of the unknown and... The fact that people don't can't really see in the dark and therefore they're, they're scared because of that. So we filmed it at night. We've got some scenes at night, some scenes at, scenes at day. Um, we've also used lighting to create a shadowy effect. We have in our trailer someone walking across the landing in a dark, against a dark, like a, a light background, so you can only see a shadow. And we've done this to create shadowy effect, as if the villain is there, but you don't you don't see the face because you don't know who it is. Um, so then we're going to move on to camera work and editing. We um, have used a lot of cross-cutting, so a lot of one shot, two shot for like a couple of seconds and then quickly change. Um, and we use this to create suspense, especially towards the end in the action scene because we wanted to create a climax to when there is silence and then the jump scare. Um, we've also got faster cutting, so it'll be very short, very short shots. Um, moving on to, again, the ending, the action scene. We have um, one or two point of view shots. 
um, where the um, arms are cut. We really thought we wanted to put the audience into that character's shoes and to feel like if you were cut with sudden scratches on your arms, how would you feel? We have in our trailer, we haven't really got party and drug focused teenagers. I mean, they do have a sleepover in the trailer, but they're not like there with alcohol, I think. It's just like playing, it's like a sleepover, a girly sleepover. Um, they are innocent girls, so we've played on, we've used that. Um, the vic, well, you don't really know, as it's a trailer, you don't really know if the victim becomes a hero. So, that would be an unknown for the audience, they wouldn't know if the victim becomes a hero, unless they actually went to watch the real movie. Um, we've used monsters, we've used, um, a, like, it's, it's a kind of like a, there's kind of two monsters, there's Sydney, who plays the actual person doing the killing and the, and the, the supernatural stuff. And then there's the false villain, which is the spirit, with, um, which the girls think is causing all the um, weirdness and things happening around the house. But it's actually Sydney. Final girl. Our final girl is Anne Mole. So we've used that theory as well. Um, we haven't used any adults in our, in our trailer. Music and sound. We've used crashes. So when the glass breaks glass breaks we use the sound effect on that to make it sound like it was breaking on the floor loudly we have got a lot of screaming in our trailer um either shouting names or actually screaming um we've got we've got mainly voiceovers there's not a lot of dialogue in our in our trailer per se it's a lot of voiceovers so you don't actually see them speaking but you hear them um and we've also got music which is in in my post just like old times. Research into and use of music. Icons. We've used blood um, slash gore in our trailer because our horror villain has got F SFX makeup on to make her look inhumane and um, kind of monster-like, um, which also includes blood, which was on the knife. Again, we've used shadows, darkness. Deformities is Sydney make Sydney's makeup. Um, and in the trailer, you don't really see because obviously a you don't want to give a trailer too much away, but Samaya's character does die, so... There's death. So um, there's not a lot of narrative and narratives um, slash issues like themes emerging in the trailer because you don't want to give too much away. So um, for narrative structure, we didn't have any background information. We had a little bit, but only what the doctor said and what the audience hears. You don't want to give a lot away because it's a trailer and you want them to go watch the movie. So we didn't really include a lot of um, background information in that sense. Um, it does conform to Todorov's theory of basic narratives because it starts off with an equilibrium, which is the calm beginning, um, and then things start to go wrong, which is the disruption, and then obviously trying, and then they realise that the the problem is Sydney, um, and you see Amal with a knife and blood and stuff like that, and but you, you never see the the end bit because obviously it's a trailer. You don't want to you don't see a resolute. You don't want to see the the new equilibrium because that would give it away. We do see Levi Strauss's binary opposites. Although we've used all girls, so there's not male and female, we have used good and evil um, to distinguish between Sydney, the spirit, and the two sisters, Brooke and Cecilia. So I'm going to quickly talk about the mesonsen in our poster and our magazine. So in our poster, we you can't really see, but from what you can see on the poster, it does look like they're in an isolated setting because you know they're in glass. It looks like they've been shattered out of the glass and they're um, inside breaking out, which is quite cool. Um, there's a dark atmosphere on the because it's very it's got a dark background. Um, so um, in terms of our magazine, um, we looked at a couple Empire magazines to get. Um, an idea of what they look like and what they contained. Um, so at the top, we had the Empire logo. We changed the colour of this to match our film text colour. So it, we had the um, colour, similar colour all over. Um, we also included real te media text on the side to um, make it more real and like less of like we'd made up these titles and it's not brought into the real world. So we have split. Flatliners, the Bye Bye Man, Resident Evil, and about two in rings. We um, so we took all this from other Empire magazines, and where they typically had um, lists of horror films that you needed to see, or and then 
we had our title at the bottom in big font because that's what we saw in a lot of other Empire magazines. Um, we also included the date up top with the US price in dollars and the UK price in pounds because that they that was on all of the um, Empire magazines. We also gave the audience um, a little taster and a little kind of play on words um, with our film title where it says Sydney Head gives a shattering performance in Fractured Illusion. So shattering was a play on words. Um, and we gave them a little bit of information just generally on this kind of year of horror. So um, one of my favourite um, articles on the side side articles is The King of Horror, Stephen King talks Carrie 40 years after the original release. Because in the UK it was released in January, so the issue is January. Um, and we've played on the word King as his surname and the King of Horror. So that was really good. Um, I'm going to talk about um, our magazine and our poster and like in a general consensus with the real media text. We have used um, red, which is a common horror colour because it kind of symbolises danger and blood. Um, and I just think that... So we have used um, red on both the magazine and the poster to kind of symbolise danger and blood, which is a very common convention of horror, again. Oh, I think that in terms of the use develop... Um, in the terms of using, developing and challenging forms and conventions of real media text. I think we have done that, but not in the sense that we've copied them because we wanted our product to be different from what's already out there, but also kind of kind of keeping that in the guidelines, but kind of think outside the box as well. Um, and I think our products do that because, um, yeah, and I think we do that because obviously uh, there are quite a few psychological horrors out there but we've gone um, like a little bit like a little bit further. We've gone for a supernatural and psychological horror um, film. Um, we've used we've played on the played on the um, idea that mirrors you can't you can you never know if you're seeing what you're seeing because you don't know what you look like. And we've played on that because in the bit where Sydney's at the end of the trailer, Sydney's looking into the mirror, and then you see. Um, the end, the right, the end jump scare. You see her with all the makeup on. Um, we think that could be like, oh, I'm seeing this monster, but is that really what's inside of me, or am I just seeing that? Um, I think we we played on that really well. Uh, yeah. Um, and I like like I say we had elements of the real media texts that I mentioned earlier on, but we didn't actually copy them. They're not exactly the same. They're not like very. They're very similar, but like not the same. And I think we did. We used. We've made it our own. Our all our three of our horror products, we've made our own, um, because there's not anything really like it in the industry at the moment, and that's kind of why we wanted to put different articles and real media texts on the side of our magazine, and yeah, just the magazine, because that way you're getting a different taste of different genres, um, and like some of them are similar to what we've made in the sense that they're the same subgenre, but they're not actually the same as storyline or characters or, you know, we've developed the characters in a way that were ours. So, yeah, I'm very happy with those. Yeah, so I definitely think we've made it ours, um, especially with our trailer, because it has two jump scares, which isn't common. Um, we have all females, which is only common, some, but usually there's at least one male. We haven't got any males in our trailer slash film, so we've definitely played on the fact, um, we've definitely used that to our advantage. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah. Um, if we made it 100% the same as everything else in the horror genre, people, the audience would get bored of um, going and watching horror films. Like, you want to keep the, the audience on their toes, um, you want them to be slightly confused right up until the end where they're like, oh my god, that shocked me, I don't get, like, I want them to be mind blown. Um, and I think that that happens with our trailer. Um, and we want them to go watch our film, as it were, because that's the aim of a trailer, to go make the audience watch the film. So, yeah.